doing the impossible. Our Bible verse is the book of Luke chapter 1 and verse 37. And for with God, nothing shall be impossible. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. You need to understand what the Bible is saying. With God, nothing shall be impossible. Many times in our life, we are faced with impossible-like situation. Difficult situation. When you find it difficult to pay your house rent. When you find it difficult that things you have been expecting did not come true. When the enemy tells you, you can never come out of this problem. Listen, with God, all things are possible. The Lord will do the impossible in your life this morning. What is impossible with man is possible with God. Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17. And look at it. Verse 20 and 21. Matthew chapter 17. Verse 20 and 21. The Bible says because of your unbelief. If you shall say to this mountain. Be thou removed. And be thou cast into the sea. If you shall have a faith as a grain of mustard seed. You shall say to this mountain, remove ends from that place and it shall remove. There are things that the devil tells you, situations, circumstances, problems of life, that the enemy tells you, this one, you can never remove it. This morning, I have good news for you. It shall remove. In your life, afflictions are remove. Poverty shall remove. Bad habits shall remove. He said it shall remove and it shall remove and nothing can be impossible unto you and nothing shall be impossible sorry unto you god want us to live in a realm where nothing shall be impossible unto us he wants us to live a life where nothing shall be impossible if you know that nothing can stop your progress what will you do of course you will do great things in the name of the lord you will do mighty things in life in jesus name what are the things that will help you to do the impossible. What are the things? What are the keys to do the impossible? We said some very important point. And you need to quickly refresh your mind on them. Number one. Until you dare the impossible. You never see a miracle. Don't be afraid when something looks impossible to you. Don't get fidgeting and anxious. When you see something that looks too big. Dare the impossible. And you will see a miracle. That thing that looks so big. That looks as if it is impossible. God can make them possible for you. So don't forget. That until you dare the impossible. You never see a miracle. Until you dare the impossible. You never see a miracle. And how do you do the impossible? We said you must have faith. Possibility faith. You must not be a doubting Thomas. You must not push yourself down and say, ah, since they say it is impossible, I don't think it's possible. I don't think it, uh, this one is too good for me. No, if it is good, God will give it to you. If it is good, God wants it for you. You need to understand what possibility faith is. The possibility faith is a belief that no matter how difficult it is, you will overcome. Possibility faith means you have trust in God, not in your strength. To know that God will perform what he promised. Possibility faith is that you are acting on what God says. Even when what you are saying is telling you it's not possible. You are acting on what God says regardless of contrary situation. There's no money in your pocket. But you believe that God will make a way for you to, for your supply. There is, no, there is no vehicle to transport you to where you are going to have. You don't have a transport fare to go and attain an employment. But you believe that God will make a way. Possibility faith is trusting God, believing God in spite of contrary situation. In spite of contrary situation. So the first key in order to do the impossible is to have possibility faith. Possibility faith. What do we mean by possibility faith? Possibility faith means you believe the promise of God above the problem of your life. What is possibility faith? It means you trust what God says than what situation is telling you. You may look at yourself 
and it's like you have no going anywhere. You look at your pocket and there is no money. You look at your kitchen, there is no food. You look around to your bank account, everything is flat. Yet, you know your Redeemer live it. Possibility faith is believing God when you see problem. Instead of crying and shedding tears, you are praising God. Because you know you have a God that is bigger than your problem. Now, many people, when they hear the word of God, the moment they leave and they now face challenge, you see how people respond. Some will scatter. Some will cry. You know what people believe when they are faced with challenge. Possibility faith means your problem cannot change God. Do you understand what I'm saying now? To believe, to have a, a, a belief that all things are possible. That faith is called possibility faith. You always believe things are possible. Now, you don't have money and you are talking as if you have so much money in your hand. Now, for some people, when they don't have money, they turn to beggar immediately. It is the normal thing to do. But possibility faith is knowing the promise of God is bigger than your situation. So, when you are faced with a situation, you don't carry your problem on your head. You know Jesus will carry it for you. A lot of people get more trouble because they carry their problem on their head. They think, ah, this is too difficult. God, in fact, this one is even too difficult for you. No. Possibility faith is trusting that what God promised, God will do it. Possibility faith does not look at the bigness of the problem, but it looks at the bigness of God's promises. When you believe that things are possible, you don't, you don't listen to negative comments. Hey, you are traveling to Ibadan. That is how people, five people die on the express road. Minus me, sir. Possibility faith believes that I am going there and I'm coming back. Until you learn to have a possibility faith in God's promises, you will never see many things become possible in your life. A child was crippled. They were in the crusade. The man of God have just prayed. Asking everyone that is crippled to rise up and walk in the name of Jesus. And when it is time, they look. After prayer, the leg of the child was still dangling like this. Everything looked as if nothing has happened. But the, the mother of that child has strong faith. You know what she did? When they called for testimony, if God has done something for you, please come out quickly. Some people were coming out. This woman dragged the child. Crippled leg. Dragged the child. And started, Baby, you go. come and praise God with me. Come. And people were looking. The leg was dangling. They said, ah, Mama, it's like something is wrong with your head. Something is gone. They said, no, no, no. You are not the one they are calling for. They said, those ones that have just been, have just received a miracle. This miracle has not happened. He said, don't worry, don't worry. Hey, baby. I said, he kept on going. Ha, ah, come and thank God with me. Oh, come and thank God. And the boy's leg was still dragging on the floor. Ran down to the crucial platform. The leg was still wobbling. Mama, stop that now. Uma, this is not yet a miracle. Go and wait. Let me pray for you so that that problem will be over. No, she didn't agree. She said, ah, come and thank God with me. Oh, she when they didn't want to allow her uh, to climb the platform, she jumped. <laughs> and then she dragged the child. Hey, praise God. What happened to you, mama? It's my child. Do you know what happened? The power of God responded to that woman's faith. Before they look, the boy ran on the crusade. The pain, the place turned upside down. Don't believe because you are seeing it. Believe it when you don't see it. Possibility faith is not to believe what you are saying. It's to believe what God says. If you keep on believing what you are saying, what you are saying will stop you. But if you keep on believing what God says, you will be unstoppable in life. I see you unstoppable. I see you unstoppable. Unchallengeable. 
whatever the Bible promise you, read it. Meditate on it. Fix your mind on it. And begin to imagine it coming to pass in your life. Because if God says it, God will do it. I see God doing it for you this morning. I see, I see God doing it for you in your life. What is not possible with man is possible with God. Mark chapter 9 and verse 20. Mark chapter 10 verse 27. Mark chapter 10 verse 27. For with man, this is impossible. But not with God. For what is impossible with man is possible. Are possible with God. Look, sorry, Mark chapter 10 verse 27. Put it on the screen. Mark 10, 27. And Jesus looking upon them said, With man, with doctor, with banker, with engineer, this is impossible. With man, it is impossible. But not with God. Stop looking at what men can do for you. They are limited. Start looking at what God can do. He can do all things. Tell your neighbor, say, trust God. He can do all things. Now tell him and say, God will do all things for you. Amen. With man, it is impossible, but not with God. For with God, how many things are possible? How many things are possible? This morning, receive grace to see all things possible in your life. With God, all things are possible. Mark chapter 9 and verse 23. Now, he had just told us, with God, all things are possible. We will say, ah, it's only with God. But look at Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Can we all read it together? One, two, go. Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, what will happen? How many things are possible? To who? Wow! All things are possible to him that believeth. Look at Mark chapter 10 verse 27. With God, all things are possible. Mark chapter 9 verse 23. With who? All things are possible again. With God, all things are possible. Mark 9 23. With those who believe, all things are possible. All things are possible to him that believeth. All things are possible to the almighty God. Wow! At the Point of faith, possibility faith. You operate like God. How? Your faith in God gives you power from God to operate like him. Stop believing what you are saying. That one room apartment where you are will soon turn to a duplex. Stop believing what you are saying. That you are riding and you are on top of a bike does not mean it will not turn to Pajero. Stop believing what you are saying. You, you, you may not have enough money to even buy a bag of cement. But believe all things are possible to him that believe it. Are you a believer? Can you raise up your hand and say, I'm a believer? Say, Lord, I believe. Can you say it? I believe. I believe. Shout it again. Say, I believe. I believe I am healed. I believe I am blessed. I believe it is well with me. I believe I will not die before my time. Open your mouth. Say what you believe. I believe it shall be well with my life. I believe as I go from glory to glory. Can you shout it? Say, I believe. May it be unto you according to your faith. I say, may it be unto you according to your faith. Possibility believing. If you are given a job at work and everybody is running away from it, don't run away. Don't run from difficult tasks. Look for impossible thing and go after it. There, the impossible. Some of us, the reason why we can't do impossible, you dodge it. You run away from it. When they say, well, we need some people to go for evangelism. You say, no. We need some people to, to uh, plant flower. We say, we are here. Don't dodge difficult things of life. Don't give excuse. Believe. Have possibility faith. What is number two? If you are going to do the impossible. You must not just only have possibility faith. Possibility faith must lead you to possibility prayers. If you are going to see the impossible become possible. Pray. Don't agree with your problem. Pray it away. You can destroy your problem. 
Don't agree with your situation. Pray it away. Possibility prayer. What do we mean by possibility prayer? Possibility prayer is a prayer that hits target. A prayer that swallows difficult problems. Listen. Possibility prayer, when you pray it, it brings results. Possibility prayer is a prayer that confronts difficult situations and tackle it. It's not every time, it's not good every time you are running up and down for people to pray for you. It's not bad to be prayed for, but it's much better for you to pray and your problem is solved. You know why? When people pray for you, it's good. They connect you to God, but if they keep on doing that, your faith will be in man. It will not be in God. The day you will be confronted with a challenge and they are not around, you are on your own. But when you've learned to trust God, to pray and get results, you can always get it. It's in the Bible. In Genesis chapter 25, we were told that Isaac and Rebekah had married. Do you know that to get Rebekah, did Isaac pray? He didn't. It was the father who was the pastor who prayed concerning the wife for him. It was the father who said, my angels will go. He, he knew how to pray and angels will move. But after Isaac and Rebekah got married, he had gotten a miracle in marriage. But now there was no child. At this time, it was not Abraham that prayed for Isaac. He had learned possibility prayer. In the Bible, Genesis chapter 25, I suppose. Let's look at it together. So that you can, it will bless you. The book of Genesis chapter 25. Genesis chapter 25. Hallelujah. I hope you are getting something out of this message. In the book of Genesis chapter 25 the Bible says in verse 20 Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah as wife the daughter of Bethuel the Syrian of Padan Aram the sister of Laban now look at verse 21 verse 21 and Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren and the Lord was entreated for him. And Rebekah, his wife, conceived. It was no more Abraham that prayed for him. Pastors, leaders, your spiritual father will connect you to God. How we pray for you, answer will come. But it's better when you can tackle impossibility by yourself. At this point in time, it was not Abraham that prayed for Isaac. Look at what the Bible says. Isaac entreated the Lord by himself for his wife. Husband, do you really pray concerning your wife? Fathers, do you really pray concerning your children? He entreated the Lord for his wife. He took it up. He said, no, no, no. This is not about my father. My father is the friend of God. But now I'm going to talk to him myself. Possibility prayer. He said, look, this barrenness. Do you know how long he was barren? 20 years. Something came up on Isaac that day. He rose up and said, we are going to solve this problem. And Isaac entreated. If you read another translation, he said, Isaac prayed very much. Isaac prayed agonizingly for his wife. There are some things in your life, some challenge, some situations that you have to learn to attack. You see, it has helped me. When we were growing up, we were taught like all those Bible study, I write them by myself. Now, we are taught the scriptures. We are taught how to find the promise of God to deal with our problem. And because of that, it delivers us from going for deliverance here and there. We knew how to stand on God's promises. That's how to live a Christian life. We knew how to take challenges. We didn't have to carry our problem to anybody because we were taught, and that's the reason why we are teaching you. We are raising Christian generation today who easily push their problem to pastors and leaders who don't know that they themselves can get their problem and destroy it. And as a result of that, you see, when you have possibility faith and you have possibility prayer, Satan and witches and wizards are never in your equation. Look at it here. 
Okay, so witches. Okay, so he just knew that this problem I will solve it. He entreated the law. He entreated. You see, you come to a point when you want things to be possible. You don't pray normal prayer. You pray crazy prayer. You pray prayer like Hannah. Look at Anna. It wasn't pastor that prayed for her. She just went to the church and grabbed the horn of the altar and said, God, we are going to settle this matter. Don't watch your life until your destiny decay in your eyes. Don't run up and down. Sit down with God's word and say, this matter, we will settle it. He prayed and what happened? It wasn't even himself. Oh. It was the wife that was barren. <laughs> she, he prayed because the wife was barren and the prayer destroyed the yoke. What is possibility prayer? Possibility prayer is that you enter into prayer warfare until you capture the situation. Oh, because I'm praying possibility prayer, I won't come to church. Satan will begin to slap you very much. No, no. Even as we are here in church, you get old. Do you remember that Anna prayed inside the church and the problem was solved? And Eli just said the word. Go in peace. Your case is settled. He didn't have to pray long because the woman already has a possibility of faith and she was already praying through. Possibility prayer means that you pour your heart to God. You, you don't give excuse for your problem. You go all out until that problem is solved. This morning, I see God launching you out. You will do great things in life. If you have been failing before in school, pray possibility prayer. Wake up, go to camp, knock up the door. Church service open. You don't stay late. You don't, you don't, stay, don't come to church late. You are there. If the service is 7 o'clock, you are there by 6. Pray. Expecting. Church is not a place of entertainment. It's a place of a counter. You come to a counter God. You will not go empty handed in Jesus name. If you are blessed, shout amen. amen. What is possibility prayer? Possibility prayer is the prayer that brings the promise of God to reality by force into your life. Possibility prayer is a prayer that enforces God's will in your life. God said it. I believe it. It must happen. You don't take a no for it. God said it. I believe it. It must happen. He says, whatever I put my hands to do shall prosper. So what do you do? You pray based on that scripture. You stand on it. You pray on it. You fast on it. You give it all it takes. 12 midnight, you wake up. 9 o'clock, you wake up in the, in the day. Sometimes you just close your shop. You come to church. You know, just pray in the church. Just pray because you don't want anybody to disturb you. you if the church is beat, becoming too noisy, you go to camp. You lock up yourself. That's how to get things that are impossible to become possible. You don't just fold your hand. A lot of people want people, you know, somebody to just pray and some things will happen. No, that is good, but it's not the best. That is good, but it's not the best. Am I helping you this morning? Please tell your neighbor, say, pray possibility prayer. Now change your life by possibility prayer. How do you see, what are the examples of possibility prayer in the Bible? There are several of them. One, there was a boy called Jabez, First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 to 10. You have told him his name was Sorrow. Everything about his life was Sorrow. <laughs> and the Bible said that, they told him, Sorrow is your name. The experience of life was Sorrow as well. He said, no, I changed this one. And Jabez cried unto the God of heaven. Oh, that you bless me. How do you pray possibility prayer? There are prayer that you pray that brings out your heart into your mouth. Ah, ah, Lord, I reject what the enemy is doing. That is how you pray possibility prayer. And the Bible says, Jabez, after he prayed those prayers, God granted it to him. I see God granting you your request. I say, I see God granting you your request. If you don't learn how to pray possibility prayer, you will soon become a thief. Because if you don't know how to get God to do the miracle, you will look for how to steal it. You'll be complaining. You'll be complaining. Pray yourself out of whatever situation you find yourself. Your story can be changed at any time. Your story can be changed at any time. Don't agree that what you are going through is your final. No. That situation you are going through is not the final. God's word is the final. The basis of making things impossible is to stand on the promise of God. With him that believeth, all things shall be possible. I'm a believer. I'm not a doubter. I stand on your word. You said it, do it. I will never let you go except you bless me. Do you remember that song? I see God doing impossible in your life. Prayer is the doorway to power. Power of God. 
Prayer is the doorway to the power of God. Your greatest asset is not your shoe, it's not your clothes, it's not your bank account, it's your prayer power. Your greatest asset is your prayer power. Please say that to your friend. Your greatest asset is your prayer power. Say it again. Your greatest asset is your prayer. Now tell him, say, don't lose your prayer fire. Don't lose your prayer fire. Once you lose your prayer fire, the enemy can catch you. The enemy will not catch you in Jesus' name. Several times in the Bible, you see God say, call unto me, and I will answer you. Possibility prayer. A prophet that never mistake in all his prophecy. Isaiah prophesied to the birth of Jesus. Prophesied to his crucifixion. Prophesied the things that he was going to experience. The stripes that was going to lay upon his back. He saw it thousands of years before Jesus would come. And that man was sent to tell a king, get your house in order, you will die. <laughs> Do you think that that can be easily changed? Had he went and said, king, I love you, but you are going to die. The king looked and said, this man has never missed any prophecy. If he says it, it's going to come to pass. But I know something. There is power of possibility prayer to change even prophecy. Power of possibility prayer that they told you your father is your problem, your mother is a witch. What is the big, it's not a big news. It's not a big news. The power and the control is not in their hand. It's in your hand. Power to pray and change things. Brethren, church, this month that you are entering, pray like never before. Pray like never before. Pray like never before. Those who Satan want to destroy, he make them to be prayerless. And the, the man, Ezekiah, the king, said, thank you, sir. I know you never miss any prophecy. You are not like those, you know, prophets that are looking for what to eat. Thank you. I know your prophecy never, never stop. But you have taught me something, sir. That by the promise of God, I can change situation. He opened, I believe, to the book of Psalm, chapter 91, verse 16. And as the man of God left, he turned to the wall with long life. You will satisfy me. And show me your salvation. I won't see useless death. Lord, look at what I've done for you. Look at how I've built your church. Look at what I've done. Look at how many people that my life is touching. Should I die? Now, I reject to die. And he started standing on the promise of God. He started standing on the promise of God. When you stand on God's promises, you cannot sink in the water of life. Before Isaiah could finish crossing the palace, God has had him. That is how intense the prayer is. So possibility prayer could, is not about praying for 30 hours. It's about getting answer to it. If it's going to take you 30 days, stay there like Daniel. It took him 21 days before that devil could get out to, that was holding the angels. If it takes you 21 days, you stand there. If it takes you three hours, you stand there. Sometimes it can be very fast, like Anna. Amen. What is the key? The intensity of your prayer. You are praying, you are sweating. You are not looking at anybody. You are not impressing anyone. It is you and your Goliath, and you are bringing his head down. That's how to pray possibility prayer. That's how to get answer. I hope you are blessed. Give the Lord a clap offering. Let's thank him. Let's thank him. If you are going to pray possibility prayer, what is the key? The key is the word of God, the promise of God. You must locate the promise of God that is written in the Bible. The reason for it, reading your Bible is to find the promise, what God promised you. You don't read Bible like a notebook, like a a newspaper. No. You read Bible to search what he promised so that you can have what to stand to talk to him to do what he promised. Let me explain. Any challenge or problem you will find or ever encounter on this earth, it has already been written with a promise. God has released a promise ahead of your problem. Your problem is too late. There is a promise that is ahead of it. Your problem is too late. There is a promise that is ahead of it. So, your problem is not an announcement. The big announcement is the promise of God. Hallelujah. Hey, hey, I don't have money to eat. Why? There is a promise long before you were born. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. For every problem you will encounter, there is already a promise before you were born that was spoken. So what do you do? You search the scripture. Anytime you are reading Bible, be finding promises. What is the promise that God gives you? You find the promise. Anytime, the reason why you must read your Bible is to find the promise. After you find the promise, begin to recite it like an incantation. 
Abalis recite incantation. I was, I was born into a community, a town that was sold out for idolatry. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. As a young man, I was involved in them. My uncle was known. I saw their powers. I saw how they can use just one, you know, voodoo bed and people will divide into two. How they can raise one leg and they disappeared. But I discover all power in heaven and on earth is in the hand of Jesus. It's not in any bonus, it's not in any prosecution, it's not in any freemasonry, it's in the hand of Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. In that same house, as a young child, I, 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 I prayed until they could not perform. Today, my uncle's son is a pastor. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I got all of them. So I, I was from that village, from that town, so down. But I learned the promise. Anytime you are reading your Bible, don't read it and be sleeping. Find out what is it promised me. What, is it, what did it promise me? Once you find the promise, you knock out your problem. Your problem is too late. There is a promise your head is carrying. It's in the Bible. Search it out. Find it. That is your own stone to destroy Goliath. Don't joke with God's promises. Find it. Every time you are reading your Bible, don't just do your devotion alone. You find two things in the Bible. One, the promise to claim. Two, the condition to fulfill. What is the response? If you want to claim the promise, what is the responsibility? Bring all the tithes to my house and I will open the I will rebuke Devorah. So if you want Devorah to be rebuked, you can't keep your tithes in your pocket. <laughs> You find the promise to claim. You find the condition to obey. Find the condition. Find the command to obey. What is my command? Anytime you are living this way, the witches will not be relevant to you. You find the condition. What is the condition? He said, the Lord your God will make you to be a head and you shall not be tamed. How? If you shall obey all these commandments that I give to you. You cannot be disobedient to the commandment and you want to claim the promise. It won't work. So every time you are reading your Bible, find the promise and when you find the promise, you know what will happen? Every promise of God must turn to performance. If it does not turn to performance, your problem will remain. Because there is a promise that has already been given before your problem will come. That promise has to be performed by God. Luke chapter 1 verse 45. You will find it there. Luke chapter 1 verse 45. Blessed is she that believeth. For there shall be performance of the things which God has promised her. So what do you do? All you needed to do in life to get impossibility become possible. Is to find the promise. Turn it to performance through prayer. Prayer turns God's promises to performance. Turn it to performance and then it destroys your problem. That's the equation. That's how to live. You find the promise. You pray it to move God to perform and then your problem is over. This is how to live successful as a Christian. This is how to excel as a Christian. So if I am a student, what do I do? I find the promise of God that say I will know better than my teacher and begin to pray that promise and begin to fight with that promise until the wisdom to know better than my teacher come upon my head. Prayer convert God's promises to performance. Do you hear what I said? Heartfelt possibility prayer convert God's promises to performance. If you will live this way, you will be living in the realm of miracles all your life. I lived in that realm. I am still very small child in that realm. I want to grow bigger in that realm. Wow. It's a wonderful realm. It's a wonderful realm. It's a realm where you don't depend on anyone, but you depend totally on. He is responsible for everything. So it's not a witch, it's not a wizard, it's not your husband, it's not your, the problem is not you. I know what to do. Amen. That way, you can get to the peak. So I took this journey and I said, let me prove it to my generation. 
with only a bag and two naira fifty kobo. The rest was history. No dependence on anyone. Never look for anybody. The way I talk sometimes is difficult for people to give me anything. Because I will so make mouth as if there is everything is done. <laughs> like I told you one when I was getting married. I told you, Don't worry, everything is said. I told my parents, my mother, my father, everybody. Everything is said. Just come. And the whole came. And I said, my wife said, what are we going to do? I said, don't worry. You have to really be sure you know what you are doing. If you don't say it because that they tried, you too, we tried. Get your faith strong. Praise the Lord. But I tell you, God will not disappoint you. If you trust him, he will make a way for you. In the month that is ahead of you, in the name of the Lord, you will go farther than your enemies. I thought your amen will be loud and clear. Nothing will stop you in the name of Jesus. Number three. What is number three? If you want to see things, you want to do the impossible. Use the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus makes everything possible. I've told you number one. Have possibility faith. In the word of God. The word of God is the final. Find God's promises. Believe it. Trust it. Stand on it. God will fulfill it. Number two. Pray possibility prayer. Turn the promise to performance by your prayer. Turn the promise to performance by your prayer. The language they understand in heaven is not pity. It's like It's not that. That's not the language they understand in heaven. Hey God, where is your eyes? Where is your eyes? Where are your high day? Like they say in Nigeria. His eye is running to and fro the whole earth, ready to show himself strong on behalf of those who trust him. And I see you are one of them. God will do mighty things through your life. Please point to your neighbor and say, God will do mighty things through your life. Now tell him, Point to him, say, you will do the impossible. You will do the impossible. Amen. I said, amen. amen. From now, what are you going to do? Uh -huh, you are not, you are even afraid. What are you going to do from now? Now, shout to yourself, raise up your hand and say, I will do the impossible. Anything they say is impossible. My God will help me to do it. Number three keys of how to do the impossible thing. Use the name of Jesus. Use that name. The name of Jesus is given to you. Acts chapter 3. The book of Acts of the Apostles in the Bible. Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 3. And verses 3, 4, 5. Acts chapter 3, verse 3. A certain man from verse 2 who was crippled from his mother's womb was carried and laid by the gate of the temple. And he was begging there. And when he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked for harm. And Peter fixed his eyes on him and said, look at us. So he gave it. And, the, and Peter said, <laughs> the man was expecting to receive something. He said, silver and gold, I don't have money. But what I have, I give you. Listen, you have the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is exactly like money. It's your currency, it's your dollar, it's your naira. Spend it. Use that name to do the impossible. How do you use the name of Jesus to do the impossible? The Bible told us in John chapter 14, verse 13 and 14. Look at it. John chapter 13. Chapter 14, please. John chapter 14, verse 13 and 14. Can you quickly put it on the screen if you can? John 14, 13 to 14. Here, Peter said, silver and gold I don't have, but I give you what I have. So he gave him the name of Jesus and crippleness disappeared. So the name of Jesus can make impossible leg to walk, can make barren womb to carry baby. Hallelujah. Can make a way where there is no way. This week, that name will work for you. Migraine will die. Sickness will get out of you. God will make a way for your life. Look at John chapter 13 verse 4. Chapter 14, verse 13 and 14. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. The next verse, don't ever forget that verse. John 14, 14. Everybody say it. John 14, 14. Say it loud and clear. John 14, 14. This is how to do the impossible. Look at it. If you ask anything in my name, 
I will do it. If you, your part is to use that name, then his part is to do it. This morning, blind eyes receive sight in the name of Jesus. Where doors have closed in the name of Jesus, let door open for you. This morning, jobs are given to you in the name of Jesus. This morning, favor is released to your life in the name of Jesus. This morning, I command millions to begin to flow into your life in Jesus' name. The name of Jesus will do for you exactly what Jesus will do if he's here. That name is all that Jesus is. Jesus gave us his name to produce his presence. Anytime you are in a vehicle and there is an accident about to happen, I feel that notice when you say, Jesus, the accident stop. Which is wizard, they are a toy in your hand if you can call that name. Don't be afraid of witches, wizard, or you know, charm, or, or occultic man and woman. Don't be afraid. Be more confident of that name. That name has all power. You can't have the name of Jesus. You are afraid. Jesus! An headache, sickness, disease, vanish. You know why? All power that God has, all the power God has, let me put it this way. The power God used to create this world. Hear me. Listen very well. The power God used to create this world is far less than the power God used to raise Jesus from the dead. Did you hear what I said? Listen. The power that God used to create everything, the star, the moon, the sun, everything God created, the power God used to create it is far less than the power God used to raise Jesus from the dead. Wow. May you understand this. Because to raise Jesus from the dead, the Bible said God, it, it was the greatness of God's power. The, the highest of God's power. Thank you. The highest of God's power. The, the ultimate God. You know, the power is the power to raise the son of God from the dead. Make him back. The one that has become a sinner. Make him back to become the son of God and become God almighty. That power is called power of resurrection. It is the highest of the power of God. And that power, after Jesus rose, rose again from the dead, the Bible said God put all those power in heaven, on earth, by that power of resurrection, he put them together in a capsule called Jesus. That whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That name will work for you. That name will make way for you. Somebody shout that name hard, very loud and clear. Jesus, shout it with faith in your heart. Jesus, shout it loud and clear. Jesus, do you know that name? Once you call it in faith, it can make you from a child of the devil to become a child of God. Do you know that name is the only name you call upon? And if you are on your way to hell, your name enter God's register. Do you know when you call that name, all angels, they are talat and say, yes, sir, what do you want? We are ready to do it for you. Do you know whenever you say, Jesus, angels rush to the venue to do anything that that child or that man or that woman will call. You don't know the power of that name. That name will work. It will turn fire to a condition. That name will work. It will turn sickness to good. Eh? That name will work. It will give you whatever you are looking for. Whether your child is far away. Far away. Many years ago, I told you the story. I was far away. Outside of this country. My, my son, uh, you know, uh, Pastor David was in, was in big troubles. Beaten by a snake. And I was far. It will take about 12 hours of continuous flight for me to arrive. Lord, what do I do? And calling that name, that name answered to it. I was far away in this continent. I was in another continent. And that name walk. That name has no boundary. It can reach your village. It can uproot any roko tree where they are calling charm on your head. That name can scatter any shrine, wherever they are mentioning your name, that name, when you call that name, it will open the door of, of, of glory, of blessing, of favor. This morning, whatever is standing against your destiny, I decree now by the name of Jesus, let them be destroyed. Sickness die, disease die, barrenness go. Receive your miracle. Somebody shout that name loud and clear. Jesus. One more time with a clap. 
Jesus. Sit down quickly. What do you do to do the impossible? Use the name of Jesus. It will answer for everything. Number four, you must learn to get under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will make anything that is impossible possible. Luke chapter 1 verse 34, 35. Mary said, I don't know any man. How will it happen? Verse 35. He said, the power of the highest, the Holy Ghost will come upon you. Under the Holy Spirit, you can do the impossible. Stop living like a human, you mere man. You had it in a Bible study this morning. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, when you, when you have the Holy Ghost, you are more than a mere man, a mere woman. You are a more than a conqueror. I wrote it there. You are more. You carry God. How can you carry God and you are afraid of which? Eh? Even if you don't pray, all you needed to do, Jesus, they will roast themselves in fire. It's what you believe. The name of Jesus never walk except you believe in what he carries. Get under the anointing. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. How God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Ghost and power. He went about doing good. So under the anointing, you destroy the works of the devil. Under the anointing, get under the anointing of God. What does the anointing of God do? Number one, it destroys yokes from your life. Yoke are invisible things that are hindrance, barrier. Things that doesn't allow you to make progress. When the anointing comes, the yokes are destroyed. When the anointing comes, the anointing dissolves. The power of the Holy Spirit is the anointing. That's all about the anointing, the power of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit, which is called the anointing, dissolves your problem. What is called impossibility, when the Holy Spirit is at work, is destroyed. The Holy Ghost is at work this morning. I said the Holy Ghost is at work this morning. I see poverty being destroyed here. I see disease being destroyed here. I see failure being destroyed here. In the mighty name of Jesus. Wow. I can give you countless testimony. Mighty, marvelous testimony of the Holy Ghost moving to destroy. When you allow the anointing, then you see God moving. There are some things you must learn. The Holy Spirit brings forth creation and beauty out of darkness. Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 to 3. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. And God said let there be light. And there was light. Until the spirit moved. Do you know creation did not come? You need to get under the flow of the anointing of God. Don't do things that will hinder the move of Holy Spirit. Get excited. Obey the servant of God. Obey your leader. Follow the scriptures. The Holy Spirit makes dry bones. Dry bones. Do you know dry bones? The flesh is gone. The head is gone. The bones are caught here and there. They are scattered. But the Holy Ghost, Ezekiel 37 verse 1 to 10. Read it. There's no time. The Holy Ghost, God told Ezekiel, prophesy. Command the wind of the Holy Ghost to come. And as the wind of the Holy Ghost was blowing, the, the bones were coming together. The ones in... Uh, in Malaysia, jumped from Malaysia and started running. The one in, in, in London started running. They were all converging in Africa. Hear me? I don't know wherever they have taken your blessing in life. By the wind of the Holy Ghost, this week, that wind will bring your blessing back on you. Oh, the wind of the Holy Ghost is blowing over somebody's life this morning. I said the wind of the Holy Ghost is blowing over somebody's life this morning. The wind of the Holy Ghost will blow over your business. When the wind of the Holy Spirit begins to move, like it's going to move this man, you will see things happening in your life. Today, in the name of Jesus, whatever is called impossible, let the wind of the Holy Ghost blow them away from your life. Number five. Number five. What do you do to do the impossible? Unleash the power of praise and worship. How do you get the Holy Spirit to move in your life? Worship God. Praise him like Paul and Silas. Get under the flow of the anointing of God. Impossibility does not exist. It is because we don't believe. And I know you are a believer. I believe God that this month that you are going into will be one of your best months so far. God will open doors for you in the name of Jesus. Do you know what I'm saying? I see your mountain moving away. That mountain of problem, I see God's power carrying them away. That problem in your family, I see God carrying them away. Do you know what I'm saying? The wind of the Holy Ghost is going to blow. You will find your Rebecca. Hey! I say you will find your Rebecca. Somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that is necessary for your life after this service, that person will find you. You will jam your 
miracle. I say you will jam your blessing. Does anybody believe in what I'm saying? This week you will have possibility testimony. Possibility miracles. Possibility blessing. If you receive it, jump and say, yes, Lord. Say, Lord, I receive it. Say, Lord, I receive it. Open your mouth. Begin to decree whatever you want. Command mountains to get out of your life. Get very strong and bold. Open your mouth. Locate any problem, any challenge you are going through. Whatever that is a problem in your life, confront it. You, that situation in my life. You, mountains in my family. I command you to go. Let the mountain go. Let the mountain disappear. Let the mountain pack your load and go. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. In Jesus' name we pray. Pray these two prayers. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your word and your promises that I have heard today. You said in your word, John 14, 14, anything I ask in your name, you will do it. As I call your name today, Father, do the impossible right now. Every impossibility standing in my life, in the name of Jesus, disappear, get out, move away, command every mountain, speak to it, command the mountains to go, command every challenge to go, command every challenge to go, in the name of Jesus, thank you Father, in Jesus name we pray, raise up your hands and say Father, this week I call for miracle into my life, I use the name, the name of Jesus, the name above all other names, by that name today, any mountain in my life, any obstacle to my progress, I speak to you now, go in the name of Jesus. Right now, I use the name of Jesus to call the money that I need. All the money I need this week, all the customer I need to buy from me, I use that name now. I use the authority of the name of Jesus. This week, I will excel in my study. I will succeed in my job. I will not be a failure. I rise up now in the name of Jesus. As I call upon the name of Jesus, oh Lord my God, answer me by fire. Raise up your voice. Raise up your two hands. Join me. We are going to, once you hear one, two, go. You shout that name two times. By the second one, that is the last prayer. Begin to command whatever you want. You shall decree a thing and it shall be established. And the light of God shall sign on your path. Do you need a job? Command the job to come. Are you sick? Command the sickness to go. Are you expecting money? Command the money to come. That name will answer for you. Are you ready? One, two, go. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead and begin to command whatever you desire. Anything you desire God to do for you. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Command it to come. You'll be amazed. God will answer you by fire. Try it. It works. It works. It works. I have used that name to get cars. I've used that name to build houses. Use that name. It's available for you. It's your property. That name will answer for you. Command every pain to get out of you. Use that name. Use that name. It works faster than oil. It works faster than anything. That name is your key. That name is all you need. Use that name. It will destroy every work of darkness from your life. Open your mouth. Children, use the name. If you need a job, command the job in the name of Jesus. I command a new job to come for me this week. In the name of Jesus, I command promotion to come. In the name of Jesus, I receive souls into the kingdom of God. Lay your hands upon your head, your leg, your bone, your marrow, your bone, your, 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 your chest. Command every sickness. Get out of me. You pay. Go in the name of Jesus. I have authority over you. In the name of Jesus, command it. Pack your load. Get out of me. Pack your load. I don't want to see you. I don't want to see you. In the name of Jesus. Now, if you're a trader, use the name to draw customer. Command customer to come from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we use the authority of your name for victory, for blessing. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Stretch your two hands. If your faith is strong, you will receive. In the name of Jesus, as your hand is straight to the altar, whatever is not right, whatever is not planted by God that is disturbing you, in the name of Jesus, uproot by fire. Sickness uproot. Failure uproot. Poverty uproot. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says, 
we have been given authority to destroy the works of the devil. As your hand is stretched to this altar, whatever Satan is doing in your life, there is a name the devil cannot resist. There is a name the devil cannot stand against. By the power of that name, every work of the devil in your life, from your head to your leg, be destroyed! In the name of Jesus. 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 As you are stepping into a new month from this midnight, I command now, let impossible become possible. Receive your miracle. Receive your victory. Receive your job. Receive your baby. Receive your car. In the name of Jesus, we use that name and we declare that this church is filled to overflow in the name of Jesus. Any power holding anyone that God has for this work, we command you, lose them now in the name of Jesus. As you stretch your hand, stretch it to this altar. Whatever that belongs to you, whatever you desire, that the enemy has been holding from you, every blessing, every good egg, every love, every favor, whatever the enemy that, is, that has been holding away from you right now, receive it back in the name of Jesus. Receive your blessing. Receive deliverance. Receive favor. Receive breakthrough. Receive blessing. In the name of Jesus. A new day has come in your life. This week you will testify. This week you will shout for joy. This week you will shout for joy. I cause any evil tree. Any tree that they are carrying sacrifice to. Any evil altar anywhere. Whatever evil altar. Strange altar. That they are raising against anyone in this church. That are raising against this ministry. Catch fire in the name of Jesus. Scatter by fire. 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 In the name of Jesus. I release upon you. Put those hands on your head. The grace of prayer. I release upon everyone here a fresh prayer fire. The anointing of prayer fall upon you now in the name of Jesus. Ah, the power of prayer fall upon you now in the name of Jesus. Every weakness in your life disappear now in the name of Jesus. Receive fresh fire. Receive fresh fire. Receive fresh power. Receive fresh power. Receive fresh power. Receive fresh power. As you are going to your business tomorrow, Tuesday, I pray for you that in one week you will get what you have not gotten in seven years in the name of Jesus. Today is 30th. Next Sunday is 7. In seven days, may the Lord give you what you have not had in seven years. Receive it. Receive it. It is done. It is done. If you believe it, shout a louder amen. amen. Can you rejoice? Can you clap your hands? Can you shout a louder amen? Wow! If I were you, I will jump a little bit. If I were you, I will clap a little bit. I will make a joyful noise to God. Come on, praise Him. Come on, praise Him. Glory, 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 glory.